welcome to this final exploring session of 2020. Uh, who would have thought it this uh, this after near, almost uh, over nine months of doing these online Zoom uh, sessions uh, that we would be here uh, ending the year with uh, a session looking at uh, the uh, certain scenes from the play of Wit and Science by John uh, Redford, which is the third workshop. Uh, we are going to be moving towards the end of the play, and uh, we're not going to necessarily get through all of the text of the play in these, this workshop sequence, but we're going to be, uh, we have gone over in quite a lot of detail the first half of the surviving parts of the manuscript, um, and we're going to be going over in certain amount of detail uh, a couple of scenes uh, from the latter, latter, middle and latter parts. So uh, we're looking forward to doing that this evening uh, to round off the year in a nice, light-hearted, fun, clowny kind of way. Uh, and so in the room with me today, we have Liza. Hello, yes, I am Liza. Um, I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's something for which none of the audience at home have any knowledge of why, why, why Liza said that. Uh, that, that, that. That came without prompting and it has nothing to do with any exercises that we did the other day. Uh, also in the room, we have Eric. Hi, I'm... And we have Greg. <laughs> Hi, I'm Greg. <laughs> we have Rachel. Hi, I'm Rachel. Uh, and a cat. And we also have David joining us for the first time. Hi, I'm David. I feel I'm being thrown into the deep end. So. <laughs> just a bit, just a bit. It's, it's all right. We'll be very gentle uh, okay. uh, and, and kind. Um, oh. So uh, today we are looking at, this evening, we are looking at uh, the appearance of ignorancy. And uh, there is this uh, almost isolated bit of extended comic business um in this scene that i i really want to sort of dig into we're going to start by just reading through it just letting the text sort of come come out at us i'm going to allocate some readers in a moment we will then go over it again in uh, uh, uh in in, in uh, a bit more detail um and uh, and and just uh, to get a sense of how it all flows it doesn't matter if we we're, we're going to be good or bad or terrible or, or not um talking about being good or bad or terrible i'm your host by the way my name's robert um just thought i'd throw that in there should remember to do that at certain points uh so today who fancies reading ignorancy today for the first uh, first first quick read of i'll this? have a go David, you uh, would like to be the personification of ignorancy, excellent, mm -hmm. or ignorancy, depending mm -hmm. on how we decide to pronounce him, uh, his name. Uh, also, who wants to be, for the first read, idleness? Who fancies being <laughs> idle? Uh, Rachel has just very <laughs> tentatively um, uh, uh, nominated uh, herself. So uh, we're going to be going from the end of uh, idleness has a speech um, uh, where uh, she is left alone after the exit of Honest Recreation, just before Ignorancy comes in. Just going to go from the last couple of lines. Low, sir, yet ye lack another toy. Where is my whistle to call my boy? Um, uh, just give everyone a moment to find that. And um, so just a little bit of com uh, context. Idleness is... Um, is uh, a, a sort of vice character. She is a, a, a woman who has... Um, uh, taken wit into her arms and has lulled into sleep um, and uh, and uh, we are about to uh, see what she's going to do to wit, uh, one of our central characters in this quest narrative uh, wit who's had a trying day he's been killed once by tediousness and brought back to life by honest recreation honest recreation and idleness had a bit of a barney and uh, as I say during that wit has fallen asleep so there's a chap called wit who's asleep in a chair and we have idleness who's going to bring on ignorancy so this is just a, a rough read to get the room up to speed with what's going on in this scene then we're going to take it apart uh, and put it back together again so idleness if you could just do the end of that long speech last couple of lines please and then we'll move forward low sir yet yet ye lack another toy where is my whistle to call my boy? And here she whistleth. Um, I don't know if you can whistle. Marvellous. And ignorancy cometh in. I come, I come. Come on, ye fool. All this day or you can come to school. 
and mother will not let me come. I would thy mother had kissed thy bum. She will never let thee thrive, I trow. Come on, goose, now lo, men shall know that idleness can do somewhat, yea, and play the schoolmistress too, if need be. Mark what doctrine by idleness comes. Say thy lesson, fool. Upon my thumbs? Yea, upon thy thumbs. Is not there thy name? Yes. Go to then, spell me that name. Where was thou born? So I was born in England, mother said. In England? Yeah. And what's half England? Here's ing and here's land. What's tis? What's tis? What's tis, whore son? What's tis? Here's ing and here's land. What's tis? Tis my thumb. Thy thumb? Ing, whore son, ing, ing. Ing, 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 ing. Forth shall I beat thy nars now? Um. <laughs> shall I not beat thy nars now? Um, um, um. Say no, fool, say no. No, 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 no. Go to put together ing. Ing. No. No. Forth now what saith the dog. Dog bark. Dog bark, dog ran, whore son, dog ran. Dog ran, whore son, dog ran, dog ran. Put together ing. Ing. No. No. Ran. Ran. Forth now what saith the goose. Lag, lag. His, whore son, hiss. His, hiss. Go to, put together, ing. Ing. No. No. Ran. Ran. His. His. Now who is a good boy? I, 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 I. Go to, put together, ing. Ing. No. No. Ran. Ran. His. His. I, I, ing, no, ran, his, I, ing, no, ran, his, I, I, ing, ing, forth, his, yay, no, horse, and no, 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 ing, ing, no, ing, no, ing, no, Forth now. His. Yet again. Ran, whore son, ran, ran. Ran, whore son, ran, ran. Ran say. Ran say. Ran, whore son. Ran, whore son. Ran. Ran. Igno ran. Igno ran. Forth now. What said the goose? Don't bark. Dog bark, hiss, horse son, hiss. Hiss. Ing, no, ran, his, e. Ing, no, ran, his, his. E. E. How sayest now, fool? Is not there thy name? Yea. Well then, can me that same? What hast thou learned? It cannot tell. It cannot tell. Thou sayst even very well. For if thou couldst tell, then had not I well taught thee thy lesson which must be taught to tell all when thou canst tell right, right not. It can my lesson. Yea, and therefore shalt have a new coat by God I swore. A new coat? Yea, a new coat, by and by. Off with this old coat, a new coat, cry. A new coat, a new coat, a new coat. Peace, horse and fool. Wilt thou wake him now? Unbutton thy coat, fool. 
Canst thou do nothing? I note how could be. I note how could be a fool betide thee. So, wise it, so wisely it speaketh, come now, when? Put back thine arm, fool. Put back? So lo, now let me see how this gear will trim this gentleman that lieth here. Ah, God save it, so sweetly it doth sleep. Well, on your back this gay coat can creep as feet as can be for this one arm. Oh, come a cold. Hold, fool, keep thee warm, and come hither. Hold this head here, soft now for waking. Ye shall see one here brought in such taking, that he shall soon scantily know himself. Here is a coat as fit for this elf as it had been made even for this body. So it beginneth to look like a naughty. Um. What ailest now, fool? New coat is gone. And why is it gone? Twill not bide on. Twill not bide on? Twould if it could. But marvel it were that it should. Science's garment on ignorancy's back. But now let's see, sir, what do ye lack? Nothing but even to buckle here this throat. So well this wit becometh a fool's coat. He is I now. Yea, how likest him now? Is he not a fool as well as thou? Yes. Well, then one fool keep another. Give me this and take thou that, brother. Um. Pike thee home, go. Shall go tell my mother. Yea, do, but yet to take my leave of my dear low, with a skipper twain here low and here low, and here again, and now this heel, to bless his weak brain, now are ye weal, by virtue of idleness's blessing tool, conjured from wit unto a stark fool. And there we'll stop. Uh, so uh, lots of stuff in there um, that uh, doesn't immediately necessarily come across in the first read, um, but lots of stuff that does. Um, so we've got lots of different games going on here. Uh, lots and lots of different games are layered in with what's going on with this relationship between idleness and ignorancy. Um, obviously, idleness is trying to teach, uh, teach or, for that matter, remind uh, ignorancy of, of, of uh, having learnt its own name. Um, and it's a counting off on the fingers job. So there are five steps. Ing, no, ran, his, I. Um, so there's a physical business okay. element to this that is going on which we can to a degree do on zoom which is nice um but then we get games coming the other way um so it's not just that ignorance is trying to uh, is trying to be is being taught by idleness it's the question of is ignorancy also getting things is is ignorance getting things wrong deliberately on purpose at times as well as just getting it wrong because uh just getting it wrong um we have ignorances has the repeating game of, you know, now repeat after me, now repeat after me um, several times. Uh, and and the, the game here is very much ignorancy trying to um, annoy idleness and enjoying annoying idleness and idleness getting increasingly annoyed. And we got potential also for improvisation in the sense that this this could go round and round and round as many times as the audience finds funny, and that's something that we we've play uh, you have with play and with clowning, where um, you know repetition is what the game. If if the audience is still laughing, do it again. Um, uh, if they're not laughing, get the hell on with the scene and move on. Um, uh, but the, this this is could be done very prescriptively i mean we can go through this and find all the beats but it could also if you get two actors who really know what they're doing and two clowns who really know how to play the game um this this could be a, a almost never-ending bit of comic business um uh, and also yes that's slight we've played around with clowning on the uh, the other sessions where we've talked about uh, you know the, the, the that 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 hint of um threat and violence that always <laughs> tends to come in with the the boss clown versus the uh the 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 
the, the minor clown. And um, there, there's quite a lot of that in here as well. And it's a question of how you balance that. Um, and, uh, and there's other clowning things, but I've been talking a lot because I do. Um, who, uh, other thoughts from the room? Who wants to leap in uh, with uh, thoughts uh, before we go through this again in a little more detail and uh, try and uh, pull it apart? Rachel? Um, no, it's just like, I think it was Helen yesterday brought up something about doubling, like uh, how idleness and honest recreation are said to look the same. I think there's potential here for for maybe some doubling between honest recreation and ignorant uh, and idleness and wit and ignorancy and something maybe doing something with like the costuming because it seems like it, it could just be like a progression into the night or into the next morning where maybe they're a little drunk or hung over and or well, maybe this is like a little time's gone on and he's given up his studies a bit well, that's, um, th there is an element here with uh, uh, idleness deliberately swapping the coats of uh, ignorance so that wit ends up looking like ignorance um, and to a degree taking on that mantle. And there's a there's a dressing up box quality to what's going on there as well. There's a lot of play in that. Um, so, yeah, it's that question of how 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 similar they look. I'm definitely see ignorancy as 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 actually almost the stereotypical uh, idea of a modern idea of a clown in the sense of a painted face um, uh, and uh, a clown makeup because uh, uh, I, uh, idleness does paint wit's face at one point, um, which in its original interpretation might be slightly more problematic and therefore going for a clown look is uh, slightly more reasonable. Um, sorry, I'm talking again. I should stop doing that. Uh, other thoughts in the room, Liza? Well, idleness, um, usually in these morality plays, the female figure that corrupts the, the protagonist is implied to be a sex worker. Uh, so, I mean, we haven't necessarily seen uh, much of that from idleness, although Honest Recreation calls her a drab and all sorts of, of gendered sexualized insults um so so i i could quite see her and also at the time they thought uh they they people who wrote these sort of plays had a very dim view of women wearing cosmetics so you know i could i could quite see idleness uh being distinguished from honest recreation in that she was more painted more um you know a version of the the kind of cosmetics that a, a woman might wear for beauty in an exaggerated way uh, are the thoughts before we go into this with a different combination of readers? We're going to stop and start and uh, look for all the comic beats. That's uh, that's our, that's our aim uh, of this this session. Um, I'll ask Greg if you would be idleness. Um, and Eric, could you read uh, uh, ignorancy, please? Uh, we'll go from the the top of the scene again. Um, and I say we're going to stop and start. So idleness starts very much with um, has a whistle for for uh, for ignorance. I'm seeing ignorance coming running on, and I actually think probably runs on, runs straight off the other side of the stage again. <laughs> um, I would, but I'm, I'm sitting down. So no. yeah. Um, <laughs> And this is very much clown school. This is how I'm I'm seeing this. So uh, uh, call call for ignorancy, please, uh, idleness. Where is my whistle to call my boy? Come, I come, I come. Come on, ye fool! All this day, or you can come to school. Um, mother will not let me come. Oh, I would thy mother and kiss thy bum. Okay, I'm pause there. I'm going to pause there. There's lots of options here. So I come, I come, I come. I I think that we have the option there to mark that as just a never-ending <laughs> line until yeah, you are stopped to... by Why? idleness. I th I think that just repeats. Um, um, and uh, we can you can take the or idleness all this day, uh, or you come to school. It's air. You I uh, take it as air. You come to school. Um. You can say it as all, but make it sound like it's there. 
uh, if that makes sense. Um, you know, he's he, he's late for school. He should be here to be schooled, and, uh, and and that's your job here is to do the schooling. And ignorance, he has a great excuse. Yeah, yeah mum said I, I wasn't let out. Um, you know, I haven't had my rice pudding yet. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, let's try that one from the top. Where is my whistle? Call, call him on again. Where is my whistle to call my boy? I come, 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 I come. I come, I come. come on, ye fool! All this day, or there, ye can come to school. Um, um, mother will not let me come. I would thy mother had kissed thy bum. She will never let thee thrive, I trow. Come on, goose. Now, no, men shall know that idleness can do somewhat, yea. And play the schoolmistress too, if need be. Mark what doctrine by idleness comes. Say thy lesson, fool. Just going to pause there. Um, I think elements of that idleness is to the audience as well. Just going, look, look, I can, I can do work. Idleness can do things. Look, look, what I can do with this, this person. I can play the schoolmistress. I think you need to have a mortarboard ready, um, and and, and a stick. And a stick. Yes. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't bring one with you? No, sorry. Oh, what you like, what you like. I know. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, so I think with this, uh, all uh, ignorance is responding very much to, you know, with uh, standing to attention, you know, is uh, right. Come on. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Stand to, whoop, whoop, you know, all that, all that kind of business. It's got it's to be, hands. you know, you're used to this. This happens every day and you forget your own name every single day. That that's, that's, that's this is a routine mm -hmm. um, uh, that I think is going on. Uh, people are allowed to come up with other thoughts and ideas. Uh, do wave at me um, as, I, as, as we do this or throw things into the chat. Um, idleness. Um, be, you can be sterner. I would thy mother had kissed thy bum. Uh, always nice to get a cheap, cheap laugh gag like that. I, I, li I, I like cheap bum gags. That's always nice. I would thy mother had kissed thy bum. She will never let thee thrive, I trow. Come on, goose. Now, lo, men shall know that idleness can do somewhat gay and play the schoolmistress too, if need be. Mark what doctrine by idleness comes. Say thy lesson, fool. Upon my thumbs. Yea, upon thy thumbs, is not there thy name? Uh, yes, yes. Go to then, spell that same. Where wast thou born? It was I born in England, mother said. In England? Yea. And what? Half England, his in and his land. What's tis? What's tis? What's tis? Hossum. What's tis? Um, tis and I think thumb. yes, that's 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 angry moment. If you have a stick, I think there's definitely some beating going on there. I I, I know we may be going <laughs> very punch and Judy here, but I I I I, I think that's allowed. Uh, Liza may disagree. I, I don't know if we go straight to beating yet. I think um, I, I think uh, uh, there's there may be some physical business implied here that ignorance uh, is sort of crouched in, in a sort of learning posture with their thumbs up somehow. Um, and and idleness is gonna take their two hands and separate them. Here's ing and here's land. Now what's this? The first one uh, ing. So I think what's tis is more likely to be like, what's this? Uh, uh, and, uh, and I think she isn't going to get, yeah, I don't think she's gonna get really mad until after he deadpans up, it's my thumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's that building of frustration, um, um, you know, uh, uh, in those 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 beats, and and the length of the pauses as well. I mean, again, this is very much what the audience will be telling you. Um, 
So uh, the thing, ignorancy, I mean, in, in the most innocent smiley, um, I've got a secret way. Um, you're, you're delighted when you come up with the answer that it's your thumb. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Um, um, uh, 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 yeah, and, and enjoy annoying idleness uh, as, as much as you can. How annoying can you be? Uh, idleness and what's half England? Let's uh, let's let's uh, go from there. And what's half England? Here's ing and mm, other hand. Oh. And what's tis? What what's tis? What's tis? Awesome. What's this? Mm. He's in and his land. What's this? This my thumb. Thy thumb. <laughs> <laughs> in awesome. In. For shall I beat thy nas now? Um, um, yes, um, and that's the thing. You're genuinely thinking about whether you want to have your ass beat. <laughs> 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 and I think it's a, a point on what is meant by fourth of, uh, uh, and uh, <clears throat> we have the we have the advantage later on when we're talking about something which is fourth in the sequence. You're only at you're only at the first bit of the sequence, your yeah. thumb. So, but at this stage, it's you know it, it it's it's meaning something slightly different. Uh, Liza uh, perhaps has a thought. You're muted at the moment. You're right. I could be talking all kinds of intelligent stuff, and nobody would know. Um, I know. The uh, I like the idea of there being a physical gesture attached to each syllable, where ing is the thumb. And no is her smacking him on the ass, <laughs> and and ran is some kind of dog-like gesture, and something else for the for the it's a beautiful day in the village and you are a horrible goose. So, <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> Untitled goose game. Oh, I've got a goose um, up it. Sorry. Um, uh, um, yes, because you're you're working through the hand, but that doesn't mean that that you can't use other elements uh, of physicality as well. I mean, we've got the thing, you know, ignore, ran, see, you know, and, uh, uh, but it, it, it's the way that fourth is, um, you know, is, is basically at that point just meaning no! <laughs> you also get to say no later on, but you're saying no to say no as in uh, ignorancy. Um, so you've got lots of uh, words that could have two meanings and therefore confuse the situation even more which is uh, really really nice um so that yeah there's that threat um but he doesn't understand the threat he, you know and when you get angry with ing horse and ing 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 he's really happy he's got ing <laughs> so that's the juxtaposition is between the frustration and anger of the boss clown and uh, and and the, uh, the 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 really really happy you know, uh, ignorancy all the time. He's always happy, except when he's not. Eric, you can kind of imagine him like ignorancy sort of going. Uh, yeah, the, the sort of whole Rocky running up the steps thing, where it's like ing 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 ing, and like sort of to the audience, and like Fourth obviously grabs him by the collar. Yeah, <laughs> put him back in his place, or like Next. by the ear or something. Or yeah. <laughs> um, yes, and so you're asking the question: Shall I beat your your ass now? Uh, shall I beat your ass? Um, and, and of course, you're expecting him to say no, so you can get to the next part of your lesson. <laughs> and he doesn't say no. <laughs> so you are again. It's another feed that you, you, you. He just won't do the response that you want. And and to some degree, perhaps ignorance. He knows that that's the answer that you want. So it's it's that fun, funness. Um, Let's go from ing, 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 and the threatening to beat his ass. Ing, 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 
no. Um, Beat uh, thy ass now. Um, um, um. Say no, fool. <laughs> No, 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 Dog. Uh, dog, 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 bark, bark, arf, 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 bark, bark, bark. Dog, bark. You um, dog ran, Horson. Dog ran. D- dog ran, Horson. Dog ran, dog ran, dog ran, dog ran. Put together. Ing. 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 No. No. Ran. Uh, ran. Fourth now. What saith the goose? Lag, 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 lag. Yeah, I'm just going to pause there at that moment. Uh, I, I don't actually know what the the, the 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 why you're saying lag. I don't know what the mean. No, there, there must be a reason. The sound that, of the goose. But I haven't found a gloss for what that is. Well, a a lot of the animal noises are, you know, again, they're strange to our modern ears. Um, We're used to hearing dog bark, but um, but ran uh, is not something we're used to hearing. And I I think, you know, you can get quite a lot of comedy mileage about out of growling at each other. I think ran is a is a yeah. (laughs) So it's it's more (laughs) ignore. But yeah, I mean, we're used to thinking the goose is honking. Uh, yeah, the... so maybe that's it's a honking sound. Lack, lack. Yeah. Kind of noise. Because uh, there's a species of goose native to Britain called the grey lag goose, uh, which might. Uh, I've never... uh, I well, don't that, quite that know might be, that how might far be... back the name goes. Well, that might be it. That, 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 yeah, that makes sense. I like that. Yeah, I think um, in some languages it's like lag or like sort, sort of. Uh, it, they alternate between lagging and hissing. Which is kind of weird. <laughs> so we need to make the lag more of a honking sort of lag. Um, lag. Uh, whereas <laughs> we wanted the hissing noise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. This, this, uh, yeah. Uh, so fourth now is always no next, next, next. You know, so he's making fourth now. Um, even though this is now fourth in the sequence. Um, so <laughs> oh, I think it's fourth. Are we fourth or are we third? Still third. No. Fourth. Uh, third. Oh, I don't fourth. Know. Yeah, so yeah, so the dog ran is more dog run, 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 run. Like a machine. Uh, <laughs> this is how I remember. Um. Okay. Uh, fourth now, what saith the goose? <laughs> oh dear. Oh, I've lost my freaking place now. Fourth now, what saith the goose? Lag, 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 lag. Ah, hiss! They, 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 they hiss. Hiss. Go to, put together. In. 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 No. No. Run. 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 Yes. Now, who is good boy? Yeah, hey, 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 I, 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 yeah, and I feel you need to give him a sweetie or something. <laughs> Just or a pat on the head. Not so many hands. <laughs> 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 All right, no, anyway. Pat now, him on who, the head. Now, who is a good boy? I, 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 put together. Ing. Ing. No. No. Run, 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 run. I. I, I, I. In, I. no, run, he's, I. In, no, 
Run. Ay. Ay. Ing. Ing. Oh. No, no, no. Horse. No. Yeah, no, 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 that's no, no, the point no, no. there where the no is really yeah. important. So see, he gets to ing, ing, nothing's coming next. Oh, yeah. Nothing's <laughs> coming next. He goes, you know, fourth, come on, what's next? And he, he goes immediately into his, and he's just, yeah, no! Ah! Mm. Uh, it's and it's, uh, it's that, that, that constant... <laughs> It's, I'm uh, surprised I haven't hit him more often yet. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you may not hit him, but it might be just. It might be where I have a Ooh, to get you. Yeah. No. 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 Can you never get the bloody line. No. 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 Fourth now. Yes. Yet again. Run. Horson. Run. Run, Horson. Run. 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 No. Run. In. No. Run. Fourth now, what said the goose? Dog bark, dog bark. What? Dog bark? Oh, yes, Horson. Yes. Yes. I no ran his eye. In no ran his eyes. I, 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 I. I will say it's now fall is not the thy name. Yay. Uh, yay. Well then, can me that same? What hast thou learned? It's um, I, I, I cannot tell. <laughs> and that's the payoff at the end, is you know. Uh, and and uh, the can there is probably more like Ken. So well then, can me the same? What has you learned? Big pause. <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> It's all gone straight out the other uh, out, out the other side. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. It's it's that repeating game. It's it's yeah. The, the and the, the Greg, how frustrated were you by the end? A lot more than I was the first time I did that. And actually, because it makes more sense now, because <laughs> I think we played it at such a pace the first time, mm. and I was literally reading it blind, and I can't remember who was my ignorance. Uh, ignorance here at that point um but you know we're playing it and not really knowing where we were going with this and it's been great to go back and pick it out and I, look, thank you because it's been fabulous doing it again i love this scene i just feel like it wants to kill me now i do you're right well, that's, that, that is part of the game is that yeah how far you can this is the thing for the clown uh for your role here is how far can you push him without getting beaten <laughs> That's the thing. You you want to push him to the point of absolute despair, uh, mm. but you also don't want to get hit. Um, and uh, and that's that's uh, uh, one of those things. Um, we're not going to go over the rest of this scene. Um, uh, we're, uh, I'm just going to note a few things uh, for future reference. So what we have following, uh, we, we did read it, um, is all the business with the coat. And this is sort of, it's plot business, but it's also repeated action business. So it's the case of, uh, they want to swap the clothes. Um, so first of all, you have to get Ignorancy to take his coat off. This takes a while. Um, so that's all, the, put back thine arm, fool, is all this thing about, you know, d d you know, make sure. And then you've got to put the coat onto Ignorancy. Uh, so it's dressing a toddler. And the again, the game with Ignorancy is making it as hard as possible for idleness to get to, to get that done and even the, the moment you put the coat on on him um the the coat keeps falling off and you see you have to keep putting it back on again and um and the scene ends or it did end with that moment of uh, of uh, ignorancy going oh that's it, that's me 
he looks just like me, just to make sure for the audience they know <laughs> that there's some role reversal going on. Ignorancy has uh, has has completely changed uh, uh, how he looks. Uh, so uh, yeah, any additional thoughts? Comic business, uh, additional stuff we can throw in there, Liza. Just that idleness proves to be a better teacher than you might think she would be, uh, being that she's idleness. Like that seems like a. You know, not with the beating, obviously, but it it does seem like a kind of valid technique to to teach this person who doesn't know his name his name. Yeah, you know, you've got five five uh, syllables in your name. You've got you've got your hand. We, you know, you can carry it. I wouldn't be surprised if he's actually tattooed on his knuckles. You know, uh, it's that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, idleness. Um, basically, drops any allegorical sense for comic effect broadly idleness is just playing a role here to make this comedy scene work uh because this comedy scene is mostly actually not necessary you don't need to teach ignorance his name uh it's a very very long-winded way of explaining this character's name is ignorancy uh, or ignorance i um is uh, perhaps more accurate other thoughts before we move forward Okay, um, I'm going to ask... Oh, uh, Eric. Uh, just, like, some of the pauses were actually me just scrolling down the script because, like, obviously a lot of it is the same. So it was like, it, do I have anything else to say? It's just the same thing. Just, like, <laughs> say, just echo what Greg says. Um. Yeah, and it's the fact that most of Ignorancy's repetitions are also longer as well. And is that thinking time? Is it going his... Um, and, and looking to see or trying to figure out what the next thing because the next thing is I and it's interesting we've got an I in the middle of a hiss at one point as well uh, and I must check it whether that's authentic or that's uh, just an interesting artifact um, yeah uh, anything else okay we're going to do um, a brief moment I'm going to ask David because David hasn't uh, is new to the group to uh, read Confidence now Confidence is a a character we have encountered before. He's a servant character. He's got a job to do. He keeps bustling in. He basically is the person to break up between scenes. Okay. Um, and... So he, he he is wits wits servant. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. He's been sent on an errand um, to deliver uh, a uh, a picture uh, to uh, to science uh, the intended, and he's been given um, uh, this sword that he has with him as a sort of return token. This is the sword that Wit needed earlier to fight the tediousness monster. Uh, and uh, and Confidence has this okay. now. So uh, we, we haven't quite decided precisely how Confidence should function. He could be a bit of a cheeky, chappy servant character, but uh, maybe not. So let's see what comes out. OK, so for all my seek and seek. Absolutely. OK. I seek and seek as one on no ground can rest but like a masterless hound, wandering all about seeking his master. Alas, gentle wit, I fear the faster that my true service cleaveth unto, me, unto thee. The slack of thy mind cleaveth unto me. I have done thy message in such sort that I not only for thy comfort to vanquish thine enemy have brought here a sword of comfort for thy love dear, but also further I have so inclined her that upon my words she hath assigned her in her own person, halfway to meet thee. And hitherward she came for to greet thee. And sure, except she be turned again, hither will she come or be long plain, to seek to meet thee here in this coast. But now, alas, thyself thou hast lost, or at the least thou wilt not be found. Alas, gentle wit, how dost thou wound thy trusty and true servant confidence to lease my credence to lady science? Thou leasest me too, for if I cannot find thee shortly, longer live I may not, but shortly get me even into a corner and die for sorrow through such a scorner. Ah, oh, yes. I, what I really like about this little speech, I'm glad we did it, is uh, mm. the fact that wit is still on stage dressed up like a like ignorancy so, so he doesn't he, 
he doesn't recognize him and so, no he's just so, some yeah. random asleep person on yeah, the yeah. Chair. um and uh, yeah and the fact that you're actually quite you feel hurt actually he seems mm. quite hurt by the fact that he's been abandoned by his master yeah yeah uh, any other little thoughts on, 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 on that speech, Eric? It also feels like um, confidence is kind of going, look, my, my street credit is going to drop. You know, you, I told I told science that, you know, you're the best person in the world, whatever. And now if you don't turn up, this is going to be a problem. No one's going to believe me anymore. Yeah, yeah. You've, you've mm -hmm. done a massive sales pitch for your master and your master can't be found. Um, yeah, that's... Mm -hmm. uh, that's an important point. Yeah, I'm liking that. I'm liking this confidence. It's in other iterations of the play, confidence is slightly different, as I recall, or the nature of the character. The servant characters that are there are slightly different. But this one is a, a, quite a genuine chap, it feels. Uh, quite, quite, it feels uh, good. Other thoughts? No. Nope. OK, so we're going to skip. Can I, just go, can, oh, I just yeah. go, can I just go through it again? Yeah, absolutely. Is that OK? Yeah, no, no, I'd love it. OK. I seek and seek as one on no ground can rest, but like a masterless hound wandering all about seeking his master. Alas, gentle wit, I fear the faster that my true service cleaveth unto thee, the slacker thy mind cleaveth unto me. I have done thy message in such sort that I not only for thy comfort, to vanquish thine enemy have brought here a sword of comfort from thy love dear. But also further, I have so inclined her that upon my words, she hath assigned her in her own person, halfway to meet thee. And hitherward she came forth to greet thee, and sure, except she be turned again, hither will she come or be long plain to seek to meet thee here in this coast. But now, alas, thyself thou hast lost, or at the least thou wilt not be found. Alas, gentle wit, how dost thou wound thy trusty and true servant confident to lease my credence to lady science? Thou leasest me too, for if I cannot find thee shortly, longer live I may not, but shortly get me even into a corner and die for sorrow through such a scorner. That was really nice. What I liked about that was um, I felt like there was an audience res response coming from that as well, uh, especially with the way this play works with audience. Uh, it, it felt like there should be an R at times because there, there is a real there is a real sadness to him. You know, he's got the sword. He's, he's got all the, the stuff. And it's just I, I, I did want to just go. <laughs> There's a sort of buttons quality to it. <laughs> I really liked um, uh, Rachel. Um, this is a, a little, I, I think, I forget the name of it, but I think there's a form of Welsh poetry where there's like half, oh, yes. where it's half rhymes in the lines. Mm. Yeah. And the second time you took it, uh, you took it again, when you took it again, David, I, I felt the way you took that, it was hitting, it was hitting that and making that that in in what was already there in the writing was coming out to me yeah yeah I, <laughs> first time it. round. that's why i wanted to try it again because the first time i went through it every time i thought i was missing it so mm. yeah yeah it, it's interesting that the, that we've got this play which has a, a first class of relatively simple uh verse, verse structure and uh mm. but actually it, it's it, 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 it does um, reward a little bit of digging and mm, uh, mm. and play. Um, it's slightly, yeah, it, it's not as naive as it looks on the mm. page. Um, uh, Rachel again, and then the, Eric, I think. Yeah, th this is like that, that thing you're talking about. I feel like um, he really loves like structure. And I think, I think there's so much, um, coming from that like I think he just likes to insert these sort of word plays and these these form plays I, I, I don't know how to describe it like you know there's some people that they that they're coming from it, I don't know it's like technical versus, versus emotional and he's creating from the this technique so much so many different layers 
that that it kind of echoes out into having into having more. I don't know. It's something that from like a guy who is who is writing for students and things like that. That it, it's like it. You can see that in his person. Like his personality really comes out in in the emphasis on on form in this writing. Yeah. Uh, lovely, Eric. I was just going to say that it's uh, you can kind of imagine confidence coming in with like you know really carefully with the sword at the beginning and then like by the end of the scene he's just like dragging it behind him like I don't care anymore I'm going to go die in the corner <laughs> because I'm a teenage boy and I don't well you know it could be that or just sort of like really really sad but like with that uh, Liza Now I wonder um I guess for the next scene wit can't still be lying there but I don't see any mechanism for getting wit off stage. Uh, that I, I don't think he leaves. I know there's other stuff going on. He may be hidden behind a curtain or something in in some fashion. But I don't think he technically leaves because they talk about him. Um, there is a sort of wit cometh before, um, but uh, is is a stage direction. I don't know if that's an authentic one. Yeah, and confidence. It seems like confidence doesn't find him. He doesn't. No, no, he misses uh, him. Yeah, uh, and I also love the implied physical business of idleness ending with a dance and sort of jumping over him and jumping to either side of him. Mm. Um, and yeah. but she, but but she doesn't take him off stage, or there would be some kind of oh, how heavy this fool is that I have to drag off stage. Yeah, I something. think he's just asleep in a corner. Um, I, 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 you know, and there might be say, say, say a curtain to to just uh, cover him or something uh, i think it's a good question ignorance's garment mm. yeah exactly yeah yeah um depending on how much business they do in terms of getting that garment on him um as, as that uh, but it could mm. just be draped over him in that, that way mm. um depends on how much space and what our production values are uh, <laughs> <laughs> there are production numbers so who knows um mm. We're going to skip slightly ahead. We're not going to skip very far. So there's a sequence now where fame, favor, riches, and worship come in, and there's a song. Uh, we're going to keep going past that. Uh, experience and science enter during that. We're going to go until just after fame, favor, riches, and worship go out. Uh, and we're going to pick up there with experience and science, having a bit of a proper bit of dialogue. Um, so. Um, uh, science is a bit sad, and experience, uh, who is mother dearest, um, is uh, is going to try and uh, uh, make things better, or at least find out what the hell is going on, and uh, and uh, that we will introduce wit in a little bit. So I'll ask Liza if you could read experience, um, and Rachel if you could read science, please, and we'll go from. Um, Science's dialogue technically is sort of continuing with the people who have exited. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll go from indeed small calls. We'll go from there. Indeed, small calls given to care for the world's favoring, seeing the wits of the world be so wavering. What is the matter, daughter, that ye be so sad? Open your mind to me. My marvel is no less, my good mother. Then my grief is great to see, of all other, the proud scorn of wit, son to dame nature, who sent me a picture of his stature, with all the shape of himself there opening, his amorous love thereby betokening, born toward me in abundant fashion, and also further to make right relation. Of this his love he put in commission, such a messenger as no suspicion could grow in me of him, confidence uh. who i ensure ye with such vehemence and faithful behavior in his moving set forth to the pit of his master's loving that no living creature could conject but that pure love did that wit direct so now this being since the space of three times sending from place to place between wit and his man, I hear no more. Neither of wit nor his love so sore. How think you this, my own dear mother? Daughter, 
In this I can think none other but that it is true, this proverb old, hasty love is soon hot and soon cold. Take heed, daughter, how you put your trust to light lovers too hot at the first. For had this love of wit been grounded and on a sure foundation founded, little void time would have been between ye, but that this wit would have sent or seen ye. I think so. Yea, think ye so or no, your mother experience proof shall show that wit hath set his love, I dare say, and make ye warrantize another way. And we'll just pause there briefly at this sad moment between mother and daughter. Um, I mean, there's there's something really nicely teenagey uh, uh, about science uh, uh, in elements of that. And it was that question of Liza, what do you do with, um, I mean, is it, uh, or is it, uh, I don't know what to say. Um, what kind of, you've got options with that, um, and, 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 and say, same with the so of just let, let her continue doing the talking before you can, I, I, you, you're quite damning, it has to be said. You're not very impressed with, with wit at all, are you? No, no. But on the other hand, I guess my instinct was that she had, you know, she really liked this guy. And uh, wh when your daughter confides anything about her romantic life, you have to be really empathetic with her. Uh, uh, otherwise, she'll just never tell you anything and retire to her room and listen to headphones. And um, so, so uh, you, uh, so, so um, I, you know, if you have to deliver the message, he's just not that into you. You you have to at least be gentle about it. <laughs> I, I'm really uh, just when you were talking about uh, her in, in a room with headphones on. I just have the the song that we just skipped over is you know maybe that's actually on on her headphones uh, and that so you know and the, yes it comes to life in the room but actually that's a route into um, the, the 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 song that happened before uh, which we did skip over. Um, but um, it's, it's sort of a sad song in that sense. It's uh, it's uh, size upon size, tears falling down from mine eyes too. So yeah, I, I like the idea, especially as it means we can cut some extraneous characters of just making this uh, science listening to some really sad tunes. It was our song, man. It was our song. <laughs> My daughter is a goth. <laughs> Rachel, how was it for you? Uh no, it's like j just what Liza was saying that that that's really what it seems like to me is that that experience is has been through this before, has had these these moments before, knows that age, um, and yeah, it's just ki kind of you know how how to say it in a comforting way <laughs> um other thoughts in the room before we move forward uh eric it is that thing of mom he didn't text me back like i, I texted him like three days ago and he hasn't texted back so what do i do do i like move on do i like what do i do i make out with his best friend uh, do i make him jealous <laughs> or what <laughs> And then the mom obviously goes, well, obviously this is not for you, dear. <laughs> if he liked you, he would have texted, um, you know. Even just like an aubergine emoji or something, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, Wit, Wit is absolutely texting everyone aubergine emojis after he gets into the hands of idleness. I, I, I think to be fair, it might be a bit worse than that, but... Um... <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Anyway, maybe we'll pull back from this uh, from this uh, this particular thread. Um, we will move on. So wit cometh before. So it suggests that maybe wit's half listened to some of what's just been said before. So maybe he woke up at some point during uh, and has just pulled himself out from uh, under things. Uh, Greg, do you fancy being wit? Uh, uh, let's see. Let's see how this scene progresses. So we still have science. We still have experience. Uh, experience. Uh, can we actually experience? Could you just do your last four lines again, um, sure. just to give Wit some motivation if he has been over overhearing you? Yea, think ye so or no? Your mother experience proof shall show that Wit hath set his love. I dare say, and make ye warrantize another way. So 
but your warrantize warrant no troth. Fair lady, I pray you not be not wroth till you hear more. For dear lady science, had your lover wit, get your confidence, he's man. Okay, I'm just going to actually stop you there because you're doing this very nicely. Uh, I think what we need is reactions. Um, uh, so, I, I, uh, so you have no idea who this crazy man dressed as a clown is. Yes. Uh, and this is the thing. He is. He's got full clown makeup in our production. He is dressed in a full, a full Piero costume, and he's coming at you. And I think can you can go wit even more. You know, try and explain yourself really quickly. I. I just figured out that warranties ought to be warranties because it's an early form of guarantee. Okay. Sorry about that. I know, it was my mistake. Mm. Okay, lovely. Uh, Eric, uh, I, I just have before. a question. Is this wit dressed as ignorance or is this ignorance dressed as wit? This is wit dressed <laughs> as ignorance. They, 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 have, they have, while he's asleep, painted his face and put him in other clothes. Um, it's the worst. Um, you know, uh, yeah, I suppose it's a bit like uh, a stag do, uh, where he's been tied to a lamppost with uh, his face covered in, uh, in, in, in graffiti, <laughs> and now he's coming running at his, uh, his, his affianced. Uh, she doesn't recognize him, and so I think you can gabble this a bit, I think, wit, and just be really uh, be a bit scary. Uh, I think because and they react a bit scared because who the hell is this madman coming at you? So uh, wit um, uh, from the top of that again. Uh, uh, shall, shall I? Give oh him yeah, give him Miss Q in again. Sorry. Your mother experience proof shall show that wit hath set his love. I dare say and make ye warranties another way. To warranties warrant no truth, fair lady. I pay you. Be not wrath to you hear me, for dear lady sight, have your lover wit, yea, or confidence, his man been in health all this time, spent long all this time, wit had come or sent. But the truth is they have both been sick. Wit and his man, yea, and with pain sick, both stayed by the way, so that your lover could neither come nor sin by none other, wherefore blame not him, but chance of sickness. Who is this? Ignorancy, or his likeness? What the common fool? It is much like him. By my sooth, his tongue serveth him now trim. What sayest thou, ignorancy? Speak again. Nay, lady, I am not ignorancy plain, but I am your own dear lover, wit, that long have loved you and loveth you yet. Wherefore I pray thee now, my own sweetling, let me have a kiss of this our eating. Yea, so ye shall anon, but not yet. Ah, oh, sir, this fool here hath got some wit. Fall you to kissing, sir, nowadays. Your mother shall charm you, go your ways. <laughs> need is all this, my love of long grown. Will you be so strange to me, your own? Your acquaintance to me was thought easy, but now your words make my heart all <coughs> queasy. Your darts at me so strangely be shot. Hear ye what terms this fool here hath got. Well, I perceive my foolishness now. <coughs> Indeed, ladies, no. Bastards allow. I will be bold with my own darling. Come now, abass my own proper sparling. What wilt thou, errant fool? Nay, by the mass, I will have a base or I hint pass. What wilt thou, errant fool? Hence, fool, I say. What? Nothing but fool and fool all this day. By the mass of you can no good. 
Are art a swearing too? Now by my hood, your foolish knaves breach six stripes shall bear. Yea, God's bones, fallen, leave true. Be there by the mass, call me fool once again, and thou shalt call, and thou shalt sure call a blow or twain. Come away, daughter, the fool is mad. Nay, nor yet neither hence shall ye shall gad, we shall agree better, or ye pass hence. I pray thee now, good sweet lady, science. All this strange manner now hide and cover. Play the good fellow with thy lover. Oh, what good fellowship would ye of me? Whom ye know not, neither yet I know ye. And we'll just pause there. We've got a, a bit more of this to go. There's lots of interesting things coming up. I'm quite liking the idea of which uh, having glove puppet hands. Um... <laughs> Uh, there's something delightfully Sorry. creepy about that. They've, they've sewed the hands onto him in his sleep. <laughs> and he doesn't even realise until halfway through uh, hands behind backs. <laughs> there's something really, really very strange there. Um, it gets a bit violent. At the, at the, I mean, obviously, he's trying to kiss, uh, kiss so uh, have, have, a, have a bass. Uh, a bit, uh, uh, he want, uh, wanting to kiss and... and Science threatens to beat him. I mean, it's the it's the lines of violence beating back um, where it gets uh, yes a little do uh, dodgy, uh, mm -hmm. and this is when we do start hitting into the uh, the concept of uh, natural uh, uh, fools and uh, and their place in society mm -hmm. from uh, the the original context of the play, uh, which I think in my uh, my my fantasy production in my mind uh, as we lean into a more clown idea. Uh, and a slightly more abstract concept. Um, there's a fair amount here that I'd probably quietly adjust. Um, doesn't mean the, the general situation is still very comic, but um, it has a slightly different um, uh, resonance if, uh, if we're talking about someone who is actually neurodivergent as opposed to, uh, as, as opposed to uh, a clown, uh, which is a slightly different thing. Um, but it is a very interesting uh, historical subject on which we could dig into more. Uh, thoughts from the room about what's going on in that scene and experience isn't saying very much, I'm finding interesting. Um, <laughs> well, I think, it, well, first of all, if your daughter literally is science, then you trust her. Experience raised her right. Uh, and she intervenes when she, she intervenes when the stakes get higher. She, she intervenes when wit threatens violence. Uh, when Wit gets so angry about being called fool that he threatens to actually hit science and experience is like, hell no, you don't. Uh, but I think on the whole, she trusts science to defend herself. Uh, again, Wit's, Wit's descent into idleness and ignorancy means he's going about the relationship all wrong, that he doesn't care to get to know science. Uh, it's it's no longer a cerebral or, or soul thing. It's just purely he wants to be kissing and to have, but to have this person who's unaware that his face has I don't know a giant dick drawn on the forehead or something to be playing to be to be playing this um, amorous lover uh, role is 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 quite funny I think. Mm. Oh no, the, the the situation stands up very very nicely, and and there's something that, that's really quite nicely wicked about the center of, the center of this play, which is uh, it's really um, the question of actually how much does wit love science at all, uh, which we we topped crept up on last time, you know, because he does literally say to someone at one point, you know, I don't really love her. Um, so it's the interesting questions about. Um, uh, that that figure and what which is what what which journey is um, is he a clown from the very off uh, Eric I saw a hand earlier so I, I, I yeah I was gonna again. say it would be kind of funny to have the glove puppets kiss or like sort of a, a, a kiss a kiss a kiss you know what a kiss is yes yeah. or you know something like that um, and also I was I was um, thinking um, experience is this is probably like her first encounter with wit so she, she might be like sort of okay we don't know this person and it doesn't look like the picture that he sent but um does science have like this kind of taste <laughs> in men 
Mm. Yes, we're going to get we're going to get now to the, the the bit when he tries to actually protest who he actually is, and they try and actually they have this conversation coming up. Uh, Rachel. Oh no, I was just gonna. Uh, wasn't like a. I think honest recreation, you know, and what we read yesterday took off the the garments, the cloak, or whatever. I think that science gave him. Um, mm. Yes. And also, I think it. Uh, I don't know. It's one of those things like the experience could make the decision of, of whether she does recognize who Wit is, but you know, he, she she knows he's changed his clothes and he's dressed like ignorancy. And <laughs> does she really not like she not want him with her daughter mm. like that much? You know what I mean? I mean that 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 that's the thing. They've been swapping tokens. Uh, so Wit did was wearing the, uh, the 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 blazon or whatever of of signs uh, and took it off so he could do some dancing um, uh, the other day. So um, yeah. So he's not only is he not wearing her colours, he's he's dressed as you know he's unrecognisable. Nobody knows who he is. He's just ignorance at the moment, and ignorance doing things that ignorancy should not be doing um this this is this is not this is not the relationship uh, everyone expects from from good old fun ignorancy uh, eric uh, you also kind of get the impression that it's like that scene from uh, the like the post party scene from mamma mia where they're like well we're not going to get married now um we're sorry to break things but like everyone's actually happy about it because they've sorted out their own lives um and yeah cool uh, other 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 thoughts uh let's uh continue with the scene or sort of to a degree conclude the scene we'll go from science uh what good fellowship would ye of me so it's it, it this is the point where you really nail the the, the question to the, the down of you know who do you, who 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 are you uh really and uh and see what what the response and how this this conversation goes What good fellowship would ye of me? Whom ye know not, neither yet I know ye. No, ye, not me. No, how should I know ye? Doth not my picture, my person show ye? Your picture? Ye, my picture lady, that ye spake of. Who sent it but I? If that be your picture, then shall we soon see how you and your picture agree. Lo, here, that, that, lo, here, the picture that I named is this. Yea, my own likeness this is. You having this lady and so loath to know me, which this so plain showeth. Why, you are nothing like in mine eyes. No. How say ye? As she saith, so say I. By the master, ye are both stark blind. What difference between this and this can ye find? Mary, this is fair, pleasant, and godly. And ye are foul, displeasant, and ugly. Marry, avaunt, thou foul, ugly whore. Uh, nay, ye mistake me. I take ye for no natural fool, for no fool natural, but I take ye thus. Shall I tell all? Yeah. Mary, tell me your mind and pray ye where to I shall trust. No more delay ye. I, uh. I, I take ye for no natural fool, brought up among the innocent school, but for a naughty, vicious fool, brought up with idleness in her school. Of all arrogant fools, thou art one. Dead God's body. Come. Let us be gone. Uh, 
and the two go out. I think we lost uh, a couple of lines somewhere along the li uh, along the way, but I don't think it matters too much. So what we've got here is is the the picture he sent ahead um, of uh, of this beautiful beautiful uh, wit, and uh, and then he's holding up against his own clown painted face. Going, look, it's the same, isn't it? It's the same. Can't you tell? It's, it's the same. Of course, he can't see because uh, he doesn't have a mirror on him uh, yet. Uh, there is a mirror. We'll uh, we'll reveal to him what he actually looks like. Um, so yeah, very loaded in places uh, there. Um, very Anne of Cleves ish, uh, which, uh, considering the time that this was written, might mm. potentially might actually be a genuine reference because um, it's. Uh, late 1530s early uh, 1540s so it's all um it's in that sort of area um i i wonder cuz you know henry's portrait probably made him look hotter than he actually was also mm. oh yes it was definitely a two way street that one um <laughs> so yeah it's um it yeah it's this sort of desperation of look i look like me can't you tell and and it just uh, it goes worse. Um, again, still little little bits of uh, dialogue I might want to tweak uh, in that, but uh, still the general situation is still that that sense of despair and desperation for poor wit. Um, I say poor wit. He's an idiot um, as well. Uh, other thoughts, Liza? Let's let Eric go first. I've talked a lot. Uh, Eric. Yeah, I was just gonna say, uh, Wit probably has, you know, been the kind of guy who drunk texts everybody he has on his phone, just like sort of going like, uh -huh. I don't know, whatever emojis or whatever, just like, um, sort of, a kiss, a kiss, a kiss, and then like, yeah, um. <laughs> send nudes. Yeah, and then he doesn't, he pretends, he he either doesn't remember it or he pretends not to remember it. Yeah. Did actually nearly use that image when I was doing that picture, that moment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Liza Oh, just that um, it's interesting that at the end science draws the distinction between a natural fool and a naughty vicious fool and um, brought up among the innocent school an innocent was uh, in, in that period a way to refer to people, people with certain, certain forms of neurodivergence um, and and it's interesting that they should say the innocent school that um, I, I think that's a potentially neat bit of history that uh, that there might have been, been specific schools. Um, anyway, uh, so so it's also a bit uh, a bit of a bit like the distinction between the the virtuous poor and the deserving and the, and the unvirtuous poor or, you know, um, are you are you being, um, you know, are, are you being this way because you you don't know any better, or are you being this way just because you're a knobhead? Is uh, is is the question? Technical term there. Technical term. Um, uh, uh, any other thoughts before we move on, uh, Rachel? Uh, just where the where this play begins with reason and talking about his glass and telling Wit to get a glass, and then that being so important that he he's not able to. Um, not just, it seems like he's not able to physically look at himself in this scene, but he's also not able to reflect mentally on the things that he's done that have led him down this path. And I think that's, I don't know, that's such a schoolmaster thing to, to put into this play, I think. It's clever, but such a, a schoolmaster. And it's perfectly timed to mention that because lo, he is about to pull out the glass from some hidden pocket in whatever undergarments he is wearing, um, and and discover himself, as it were. Wit, you have you have a a, a long dark tea time of the soul coming up. Um, uh, enjoy. My sword is it gone? A vengeance on them. Be they gone too when their heads upon them. But proud queens, the devil go with you both. Not one point of courtesy in them goeth. A man is well at ease by suit to pain him for such a drab that so doth disdain him. So mocked 
so louted, so made a sot. Never was I erst uh, since I was begot. Am I so foul as those drums would make me? Where is my glass that reason did take me? Now shall this glass of reason soon try me as fair as those drabs that so doth belie me. Hm. God's soul. What have we here? Not also a bloody place. A devil. This glass I see well had been kept evil. God's soul. A fool. A fool by the mass. What? A very vengeance. He lift this glass. And this glass is shamefully spotted, or else I am too shamefully blotted. Nay, by God's arms, I am so, no doubt. How look these faces round about, all fair and clear, they every one, and I by the mass of fool alone, decked by God's bones like a very ass, ignorance is coat, hood, ears, yea, by the mass, coxcomb and all. I lack but a bauble. And as for this face, it is abominable, as black as the devil. God for his passion. Where have I been raved after this fashion? This same is idleness, a shame taker. This same is her work, the devil in hell rake her. The whore have shamed me forever, I trow. I trow? Nay, verily, I know. Now it is so the stark fool I play. Before all people, now see it I may. Every man I see love me to scorn. Alas, alas, that ever I was born. It wasn't for naught. Now well I see that these two ladies disdained me. Alas, Lady Science, of all other, how have I railed on her and her mother? Alas, that lady I have now lost, whom all the world loveth and honoureth most. Alas, from reason had I not varied Lady Science, or this I had married. And those four gifts which the world gave her, I had won too, had I kept her favour. Well, now, instead of that lady bright, with all those gallants seen in my sight, favour, riches, yea, worship and fame, I have won hatred, beggary, and open shame. And having spoken the name of shame, shame cometh in. I will be shame, 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 with a whip, and uh, reason followeth him. Uh, we'll keep reading on for a little bit more. David, if you could read reason, please. Out upon thee, shame! What doest thou here? Uh, you're muted at the moment, David. Marry, I, reason, bade him here appear. Upon him shame, with stripes in now smitten, while I rehearse his faults herein written. First he hath broken his promise formally, made to me reason, my daughter, to marry. Next he hath broken his promise, promised to obey instruction, and him despised. Thirdly, my daughter science to reprove. Upon idleness he hath set his love. Fourthly, he hath followed idleness school, till she hath made him a very stark fool. Lastly, offending both God and man, swearing great oaths as any man can, he hath abused himself, 
to the great shame of all his kindred and loss of his good name. Wherefore, spare him not shame. Beat him well there. He hath deserved more than he can bear. Whippa, whippa, etc., etc. I'm just going to keep beating you until uh, until oh, you uh, you say the no reason. Oh, for the reason, be good unto me. Alas, these stripes, stripes of shame unto me. Be still a while, shame. Wit, what sayest thou? Oh, sir, forgive me, I beseech you. If I forgive thee thy punishment, will thou then follow thy first intent and promise made my daughter to marry? Oh, sir, I am not worthy to carry the dust out where your daughter should sit. I wot well that. But if I admit thee unworthy again to her wooer, wilt thou then follow thy suit unto her? Ye, yes, sir, I promise you while life endureth. Come near, masters. Here is one insureth. And here cometh instruction, study and diligence in. We haven't seen them for a while. Eric, if you could read instruction, please. In words to become an honest man, take him instruction, do what ye can. What, to the purpose he went before? Yea, to my daughter, prove him once more, take him and trim him in new apparel, and give that to shame there to his farewell. Come, on your way, wit, be of good cheer, after stormy clouds come weather clear. And they exit and we'll pause there. Uh, that's a really nice point reason um shame gets paid for with the clothing that's discarded uh and that's not the first time we've we've had that you, you, know, you have that with uh, executions and things like that you get to keep the clothes uh so um yes yeah, uh shame's payment is is the clothing of ignorance <laughs> interesting um I, I i'm not gonna say i didn't enjoy whipping uh, uh <laughs> <laughs> I, I was sort of trying it as part of the dialogue rather than as, as a thing that followed on. I think that worked quite nicely, but it, 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 it might be that it does follow the sort of the, the, the bit and uh, it's actually a, a silent moment of whipping um, and just some screams, you know, however we want to go with this. Um, I, I do really like Wit's long speech there. I do like the way actually reason comes in and really lays it on thick. I I love wit when he just goes, "What have I done?" Th that's the crucial part, isn't it? That he um, that he comes to self knowledge, and the looking glass is this visual metaphor. And at first he thinks this glass hath been ill kept because if you if you don't look after your looking glass it gets black tarnish on the on the silver bits and you can imagine him on stage just trying to clean the glass with his sleeve and then realizing no it's it's not the glass it's me and um really i think you know this bit is kind of a, a lesson for us all because if we're going to forgive someone who's acted abominably you know, we only have to hope that they come to this kind of self-knowledge, that they look in the glass and they see a fool and they realize that everyone else has seen them that way too and that he doesn't really know where to go from here, but at least he knows that he doesn't know and, and then there are other characters come on that can help him. Um, and and the, the inward shame that he feels is then manifested as, as Robert very, very beautifully portrayed it. I, I, I do like the whip strokes during the dialogue where, where um, you know, I, f I think that's kind of a, a, gi a gift where reason says first, and then next, and then thirdly, you know. Um, and I just I think want one little scream. Um, the, the, the whip strokes are a little bit, they're more effective the fewer of them there are, but you can go for like the huge wind up. And the, you know. mm. Well, there's there's technically only five strokes, and then 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 it's a uh, free form uh, from 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 the uh, the whip man. Um, yes, yes, he does say spare him not shame. So I guess after the first five strokes, there are probably um, there might be more strokes that wit has to beg his way out of. Uh, Rachel. Uh, no, just, uh, I think Helen was talking about. I don't remember if it was during the recorded parts yesterday or you know afterwards but she was saying how at these schools there would be you know they would be the boys would be instructed in latin and um 
there is a there is a latin novel called the golden ass and a man's like transformed by a witch into a donkey and i just think in this part here when he starts saying oh uh which starts saying that he's got not just the clothes but like the ears uh of of you know this and then he starts to to say some things and even says like he looks like an ass and reason says at the end of his speech that uh what is it he hath deserved more than he can bear so he turned he there's so much of that I, I feel like this is another one of his like teachery moments where he's like i gotta get this reference into the book that the, i've made them all read <laughs> they'll all know it I have to, the, 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 if we follow that, it suddenly starts feeling a bit pinocchio y as well um, <laughs> in that transformation. Um, uh, yeah, and it, it, it suddenly, you know, this play, which has for the most part been very light, does does take a very, very heavy turn here. I mean, but I think it is, it, it's paid for um, very well. Um, it's not the first play we've come across in a instructive setting, shall we say, where... Um, the basic moral of the story is beat children and they will learn. Um, <laughs> uh, other thoughts, Eric, I think I saw. Um, yeah, I was just going to say the instruction seems to be the, you know, t the Taylor character coming in with like a tape measure and stuff and sort of like transformation montage. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> And also, why stop with beating children? Beat adults, <laughs> then they can learn too. <laughs> Yeah, and they uh, they take um, uh, Wit out for his big costume change. Uh, you know, uh, get his uh, get a bowl of water and clean his face up, and uh, and and so that he can return tidy. Um, uh, we we uh, ended just briefly. I, I just like uh, just before we close the session um, is uh, we don't really have time to read on uh, to the end. Basically, they all get married and live happily ever after. That that's basically where we are uh, with with the end of the narrative. And um, yeah, I just want to briefly go around the room and just uh, general thoughts about the, the, the way the comedy's working, the, the balance of the drama, the, 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 the story so far. I mean, Liza and uh, Rachel have, uh, and Eric have been uh, here for uh, either the first read through or other of the workshops. Um, so you've got a sense of the overall shape of things. Uh, slightly more than uh, than than the others. Um, I can't remember if Greg was here for the first read. You were, of course, you were. Um, so uh, and, and and so yeah, just general thoughts from the room, and also from David in terms of uh, you know being thrown in at the deep end and sw <laughs> swimming rather well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Any final thoughts about the uh, the text? Uh, Liza first, then Rachel. Just that. Um... You know, it's for it, it's it's a surprisingly accurate piece of of psychology, um, and so much of it is uh, so, so much of it is so easily readable and so uh, and and feels you know fairly fairly relevant the uh, uh, t to us today. I I do sort of persist in my theory that this play could be about ADHD. Um, that um, with being overcome by tediousness and then distracted by idleness and then just completely forgetting what he came there to do. Um, <laughs> you know, to me, that reads kind of true. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, uh, at first, Robert, I was skeptical about your wanting to stage this play, but now I'm really interested to see what would happen if, if you did. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's, uh, uh, Rachel. Um, I, I think, I think this is just, uh, I don't, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I was just thinking of the, I think the, the first scene that we did today with, with ignorancy and, um, idleness again, how it's like, I keep going back to what Helen says because she says so many, like, she says so many things, but they're all like so good. But, she, uh, what was it? How idleness is like sent by Judas and how it's sort of like this like parody of a school scene and it's kind of like a what do you call it like the moral wrongness leads to like intellectual wrongness or something but I, I think overall this 
play. He loves he loves to play with form so much and and plays on words and it's it's such a clever play. Mm. It and I think there's still so much that you could look at and and go back to. Oh, I, 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 even even d taking this over three sessions, we haven't read all of the text, but that I, I, I really would have liked to have gone over the whole ignorancy idleness thing again. And I'd like to be able to do that in a proper clowning workshop where we can really get the comedy working. Um, uh, you know, we, this is this is a first step. Um, I now have a, a page really with quite detailed notes. Uh, the first time we read it, I had a few sketched notes. And so it's this this onward journey, um, and certainly in terms of working towards a pr practical production, I mean it's not a wholly unproblematic text. We do have uh, uh, some early modern uh, hangovers, um, but there's enough here that also layers really nicely onto modern teenage things. Uh, you know, the the idea of sticking with a school setting. I like the idea that there's a sort of weird, awful school disco going on um, as part of this. But it's also invaded by clowns and just getting a small group of actors together and really workshopping the comedy aspect, getting the troupe to function as a troupe um, and, 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 and really work that. Not only could it, it, it function quite well on its own merits, it also could be adapted and, and modernised in other really quite interesting ways as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, yes, viewers at home, uh, you know, uh, do follow us on Patreon or, uh, or, or, or uh, uh, contribute on our, our Kofi. Uh, uh, and uh, maybe this production will come into being sometime in the future when we are not uh, locked in our houses. Um, uh, any other final thoughts in the room? I, just to say thank you, because I enjoyed revisiting mm. a fantastic text. <laughs> and, and getting to play with names again, which I've been dying to do for most of the nine months or whatever it is since we last did this. <laughs> um, well, you, you, you've really made me realise the, the potential of this particular text as well, because the first time I read it through on my own, it felt quite flat particularly the earlier sections, but moving into the part we've done tonight, I've, you know, I've, I've really seen the fun and the richness in it. So. Mm, yeah, it, 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 we, we were able to do in the last two sessions, uh, it was, it was slightly slower progress in places, but, um, you know, once we started getting, getting, getting into uh, the detail is, yeah, it's, it's, it's all in the, the, the potential. Mm. Um, and, um, it's uh, it, it grows on you. It grows on you, and uh, yeah, that's why we keep doing them. That's why we yeah. keep coming back to them uh, to keep looking for the layers and keep looking for the games and keep looking for the business. Uh, any other final thoughts before I close the session? Right. Well, this is it for this year. Uh, on this, uh, on uh, this is it for 2020. Uh, there may be an additional bonus video tomorrow um, uh, to ring in the new year. Uh, but uh, in terms of recording new stuff, this this is uh, this is it. Um, I'd like to thank not only all the readers in the room here, but also all the readers across the year. Uh, if you're randomly just watching a video on wit and science and have no connection to when this is being released and have no real understanding of that, you can just ignore all this waffle. It really doesn't matter to what's been going on. Thanks to all the readers here today and goodbye. Goodbye.